Scotland as you will south of the border. So Alec Neil says that Scottish workers should sit on the blue where we've got money sitting in the bank that should be put to work. Uh, putting our people to work. That's it's just utter, utter complacency. Well, that's, that's we need to plan for the future. You're not in the chamber now, Alec. You don't need to shout. Well, if we need to plan for the future. We need to ensure that these major projects and about £400 million allocated to these projects and, and get the best economic value. That means training workers. It means giving the construction industry a, straight, a steady flow of work that they can plan their workforce. What's why that's then, a Why why then did what you doing? vote against the, the budget last week, which included quite a lot of extra spending in infrastructure which would have created because and sustained we're, some of these we're, jobs. We're looking, for, uh, we're looking uh, uh, quite rightly, holding out for, uh, for an increased number of apprentices. We need young people to get us... We're not going back. We're not going to stand by and watch a situation where we go back to the youth unemployment of the 80s and the 90s. We know, and I know, what that did to my community. And it's completely unacceptable to suggest that people wait until the projects come through the fact is they do not wait until the projects get through, they okay. move on, they move out. Alec Neil, are you suggesting that unemployment, albeit temporary, is a, a price worth paying? No, quite the opposite. What I'm saying is that the measures the Scottish Government have been taking are deliberately designed to try to minimise, within our very limited powers, make our contribution to minimising unemployment caused by Gordon Brown's recession. And quite frankly, it's a bit hypocritical of Duncan to criticise other people when he voted against the budget last week. Because uh, if that uh, veto stands, then £1.8 billion pounds will be spent less in the Scottish economy next year than will be if the budget's approved. All right, well, he says he's holding out for extra apprenticeships, and that issue will no doubt be dealt with tomorrow. But why do you describe construction workers from across the EU as Foreign. Well, that's the, the term that's been applied to them in the media in the last couple of days is for European workers. Come but isn't there a, come a touch of dog whistle politics? No, no, absolutely not. What, what, you know, if you look at my press statements, my questions in Parliament in the last couple of weeks to, 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 to John Swinney, it's been about the construction industry. The construction industry have given evidence to my committee that says that this government is not doing enough for them. It's not getting the money out of the bank. Only at last August, they promised £100 million for housing. £70 million pounds of that is still unallocated. They need to get their finger out. They need to help the construction industry. They need a steady flow of jobs for that industry. And we need skills for the future. Okay. Everything less is a failure. Duncan McNeil for Labour and Alec Neil from the SNP. Thanks both very much indeed. Thank you. I'm joined now by the assistant editor at the Herald newspaper, Alf Young, who's covered his fair share of industrial disputes. That's fair to say, isn't it? I think that's right, yeah. <laughs> from the, the discussion there... Um, Duncan McNeil obviously has raised this concern about uh, a possible increase in the, the number of foreign workers, but he's very reluctant to uh, come out against them. Why? I'm not sure. I, mean, I think politicians uh, always get into this debate at points in the economic cycle when, when things are going really bad. And when things are going bad in the economic cycle, politicians, whatever party they're in, are looking to their own position and how uh, confident they are that they'll hold on to power or they might get power. Uh, uh, and I think the, the debate sort of fritters away. I, mean, I, s I was watching that discussion and thinking that I went round the Scottish Parliament not long before it opened. And I think it's true to say that something like 20, if not 25% of the construction workers on the Scottish Parliament were from the rest of Europe. Uh, there was a very significant minority of them building that. So in the good times, it's fine, you know, because nobody really notices everyone can get a job, or m almost everyone can get a job who wants one. At a time like this, uh, it, it, the, the, the events of the last few days remind me almost of, uh, uh, most immediately of 2000 and the fuel protests, when there was suddenly an eruption of public concern about an issue. Then it was fuel prices, now it's who's doing jobs in big uh, construction industrial sites. And, 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 and I don't think politicians are in control of events anymore and they don't like being in that position. And in terms of major construction projects like the new fourth crossing, it's not realistic for either of the, the politicians we've just heard from to pretend that somehow it'll be built by Scottish workers and Scottish workers only. No, absolutely. I mean, I think something that's poisoned the whole debate is when Gordon Brown talked about British jobs for British workers, it was just, you know, 
we're now trying to finesse it and say that's not really what he meant. He was talking about generating work that, that British workers could, could do. But when you start using that kind of strident, or rather strident uh, language, then you create hostages to fortune. And I think you're right. I mean, you cannot even, in, 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 you know, if we're in a single market, for goods and services, and also for labour, we do the same thing. I mean, I remember uh, 30 years ago when the Inver Gordon smelter uh, went down, a lot of the workers there went to work in the Gulf, went to work in other places. Uh, when our electronics sector retrenched, you'll find uh, Scottish electronics managers all over the place. Do you think that we also pretend sometimes that we're all Jock Tamsin's bairns, that we're welcoming to, to all comers, and actually that's not true? I think that can sometimes not be true. I mean, I personally think, uh, from my experience, when people come from different cultures and, and work amicably and effectively together, it improves the quality of the life of everyone and it improves our outlook on the rest of the world. But I think there is a real danger in this, that we're getting down a rather poisonous road where we're going to start saying things about each other that we'll live to regret. OK, Alf Young from The Herald, thanks very much indeed for coming in. And uh, let's move on to another story.